Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to Vlogmas. Today we're talking about my 2022 most anticipated releases and if I read them, what I thought about them, all that. This is just from the overarching 2022 video that I did at the very beginning of the year. I just did one for 2023 if you want to check it out. Not the like month to month ones that I will sort of do because those typically don't have like my most anticipated. Like these were the top tier stuff we had heard about at the very beginning of the year, things like that. So let's get into it. First is The Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. I did read this and this was good. Um, I think I gave it possibly a four stars just because Emily St. John Mandel's writing is so good and like the themes of this, like this was time, space time continuum stuff with like pandemics mixed in. So if you're not like ready for that, that's totally fine. This is not something where you think about the characters a ton. It's kind of like all of her other things. It's like literary plus speculative combination four star. I still love Station Eleven the most of the books that I've read by her. Then Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This was one of my five star reads of the year. So I loved this. I love basically all Emily Henry's things. She just hits the sweet spot for me of like traditionally published romance with like other themes mixed in. I felt very seen by this book. I feel like I, I resonate with the main character a lot and this kind of romance is like ideal to me. So yeah, loved this. Book of Night by Holly Black. This is one that I was like, oh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Maybe I'll like it, but I don't know. I don't love Holly Black stuff. Nah. I don't know what I end up giving this. Possibly a two star, 2.5. Eh. It just did not live up to, not that there was even hype, but like kind of what I expected versus what we got. It was really slow. It wasn't what, pretty much anyone was expecting. And one of the more interesting characters wasn't even that present during it. The second book, maybe I'd read, but probably not. It's probably gonna be a DNF. I thought this was supposed to be a standalone and then turn out to be a duology. Just disappointing all around. Black Lands by Robert Jackson Bennett. I have not gotten this or have the opportunity to read this yet, but I did talk about it as like, is this a series I should DNF? And a lot of people came back and were like, no, this is like a really good finale. I think they really like it. So I will be reading this. I did, I think, ask for it for Christmas. I don't know if I'm gonna get it. Um, I'm filming this before Christmas, so we'll see. A Prayer for the Crown Shy. I own this, I just haven't had a chance to read it yet. Bloodmark by Tracy Dion, I did read. This was good, but not great. So slightly disappointing, because I was thinking it was gonna be a five star, but it ended up being like a 3.75. Uh, I have a review for it, so I'll link that on the screen. The Allie Hazelwood STEM novellas, I didn't end up reading. I don't know if I will. Um, we hadn't had a lot of information about Love on the Brain at that point. I wasn't quite sure if it was gonna come out. Um, so I didn't read the novellas, and again, not sure I'm gonna read the novellas. I don't tend to like love, like, romance novellas, uh, but then Love on the Brain did come out. I liked this. I didn't love this as much as a love hypothesis. It's just fine. I don't think it's gonna sit highly in my feelings for long, but it was like a four star. I read it in two sittings. It gave me what I wanted. But if Allie Hazelwood had a whole huge backlist, I wouldn't wanna like binge read all of her books because they are very samey. But I'm okay with getting what I get from her like once a year. What Monstrous Gods by Rosamund Hodge didn't come out, I don't think. I don't know what's going on with this book. This is a book that, uh, I was pretty sure it was gonna come out. I don't think it has. If anyone has information about this, let me know. I've not been able to find anything. I don't know what's going on. And lastly, it was Nona the Ninth, which is another one that I liked but didn't love. This has been my least favorite of the whole Lock Tomb series, but I think the finale is going to be really successful for me and is one of my most anticipated for next year. Uh, but this was just fine. I had then talked about some stretch goals of books that I thought might come out, um, and they didn't. So no worries. <laughs> Someone might ask, I did not in my 2022 video mention Babel. Um, I think because at the time I didn't know about it, um, but Babel wasn't as big of a hit for me as it was for other people. So that was not on this list just in case anyone wanted to ask me about it. Yeah, those are my thoughts on my most anticipated releases for 2022. I mean, some good ones and some bad ones. I think it was about 50-50. I mean, not, not bad. Not one like I, that I like hated besides Book of Night, which I was skeptical about anyway. So yeah, comment down below, let me know what your 2022 most anticipated releases were and how they held up. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.